Hello, hello. Welcome to today's live broadcast. Jackie Sabrin here, and I'm looking forward to having this conversation with all of you. And so just want to remind you that I am broadcasting on Facebook and I'm broadcasting on YouTube simultaneously. And your questions or comments do show up in the chat in front of me. And so if you are coming on live, I would love for you to say hello. Say hello, hello to Jackie. Give me a couple hearts or whatever you like to do. Those are always fun to see kind of bubbling up the screen as I get uh, this this conversation underway. And today I want to talk to you about people pleasing, stopping the neurotic need to people please. So what does that mean? What do I mean by people pleasing? Let's let's break that down. And so, you know, the way I look at it is people pleasing really isn't the problem. It's it's a symptom of something deeper. And that's why you want to really look at look at this kind of behavior. And it really stems from self-worth issues. So if you've got if you find yourself being a chronic people pleaser, you really need to take an inventory around your self-worth. And um, because when I talk about self-worth, it's always if we're generating our self-worth by wanting people to like us, needing people to like us, gather creating our value system about ourselves around what other people think about us really set us set ourselves up for a huge disappointment in life not only a huge disappointment but to be mistreated um it's a classic you know if you look at people that are over givers and over pleasers then they typically have weak boundaries because weak boundaries equals low self-esteem and so you'll um, probably have your share of your boundaries being violated. And so make sure you say hello if you're coming on so that I can see them. And um, I'm just looking at the comments that are coming right now. Okay, all destination. And uh, because I love to connect with you and whew, it is hot today. I'm probably gonna break out in a little sweat. There is no air conditioning in my office today. And they've been working on it, but they haven't resolved it yet. Woo, getting a little hot. So disregard the shiny face, I'm gonna keep going. And so back to the bad treatment. So if you've had a challenge with overgiving and people pleasing, and it's really a little different. Hi, Patricia, hey, welcome. And, and so we want to not be treated badly, right? And the worst part about people pleasing is that we lose respect to people that are trying to make a genuine connection with us because it's not authentic because people pleasing is about wanting to get approval. Hi, Tracy. Welcome is wanting to get approval from others. And, and in the, in the, in that process of wanting to get approval from others, you're actually objectifying them. You're turning them into an object. Hi, Tabitha. Hi, Sunny. You're turning, people, especially if you're dating men, um, into an object of needing to get something from him. And so you're not really creating a genu genuine um, connection. And it's a lot of reasons why women that are single that are dating and they're showing up trying to please their date, their date ghosts you. That is a very classic symptom because there's low self-worth. You're trying to do everything right, trying so hard that in the process you forget to be your authentic self because you really want them to like you. And, and then you set yourself up for bad treatment, uh, ghosting or boundary violations. And, and over time, people pleasing can become a way of life. And so we want to curb this. We want to take a look at it and see if we can't um, turn that around for you. I wanted to say hi to Clay. Hi, hi, Addie. Hi, Esme. Nice to have you here. Hi, Cece and Blondie and Debbie. Tabitha, yay, 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 so glad you're here. And so um, so back to the people pleasing. You know, you may not believe this, but I was a people pleaser, a big people pleaser, but it didn't look like, like everybody does it in a different way. And the way I was people pleasing was I couldn't say no to anything. And that's one of the tips I wanna give you is a, a classic symptom or classic sign rather is not being able to say no and i was very um in my life i've always been a leader an authority and and so in order for me to lead uh in the way i used to lead 
I would say yes to everything. I say yes to that project, yes to that fundraiser, yes to being on that board. Yes, yeah, I'll do that, you know, whatever it is. And I would end up exhausted. So that could lead to exhaustion and also leads to resentment. What other things has it led to? Hi, Connie. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Faye. It's led to exhaustion. And one of the biggest ones is resentment, is resenting the very people that you said yes to when you really wanted to say no, but because you had you developed a people pleasing behavior to compensate for low self esteem or low self worth issues, which is what I was doing, even though believe me, not in a million years would I have thought that would I've ever connected it, but I'm older and more are wiser and I've done so much work on myself and I've and I've reinvented myself so many times that I can see clearly that that's what I was doing but now I can say no I can have healthy boundaries I'm not exhausted in fact less is more and I'm finding so that I can show up in a, a hundred percent in my authentic self that's right start, start saying no you can get very good accused of, of being selfish and um, and so some of the other things is what what else can happen? People can get angry with you, right? You feel uncomfortable because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to distance anybody from you. You don't want them to be disappointed in you or angry with you. So you'll say yes, because you, again, goes back to want their approval. Don't want them to reject you. But the very thing you're doing is rejecting yourself in that process. You are not even getting your own approval, but you're deferring to external circumstances and people to tell you what your value system system is. And it 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 doesn't build our confidence, right? Yeah, you don't do a good job because your space too thin. Yep. Spread too thin and then you punish yourself for not being good enough at whatever you're doing. So true. So it's su super subtle. The most, you know, powerful, incredible, accomplished women, all of us are subject to this because, and I'll, and I'll give you the quick, my quick analogy is that from the minute we're born, we learn to people please. We have to, we have to survive. And the way we do it is to be good. Our parents want us to be good. They reward us. And when we, we're not good, we get whatever we get, the consequences. So we want to be good because when we're good, we get the the emotional, physical uh, support and well-being that we need as children. But then we mature, our bodies mature, but the behavior doesn't. And we continue this, this neurotic um, behavior of people pleasing, which alienates uh, people around you and especially yourself. So you're really abandoning the thing that you don't want to happen to somebody to reject you or abandon you, but then you're doing that to yourself. You're rejecting your own boundaries. You're rejecting the fact that you're exhausted and you're not um, protecting your boundaries because it's a, it's a blind spot, right? Who's pulling the strings there? It's your, it's your patterns. They're pulling the strings and it's creating the behaviors that is creating the dysfunction. And, and so, hi, Sabrina. Hello. Yep, we self-sabotage. Absolutely. And so let's go over a couple more that I have, a uh, couple more tips that I want to give you, just kind of bring to awareness. So this is all about bringing awareness, expanding the conversation so that you can calibrate to my thinking, to where I'm at in life. Because, and, and you're already in a great place in your life. It's not about that I'm in a better place or a higher place. Not, it's not about that. But everything's an energy. Everything's a vibration. Everything's a frequency. We're all energetic beings. So when I say calibrate, if you calibrate, you not only bring, bring, go up to the top, but you also close the gap of people pleasing. Because when you're being influenced, and you bring awareness too, then you can more quickly turn things around for yourself and, and address things because you have that awareness and you have a model for what would be a more functional way to do it. And so um, a lot of people say that people pleasing is kind. They just want to be kind. But the thing is, kindness isn't, uh, isn't conditional. When you do something for someone, you want to do it unconditionally. Like, I want to let me treat you to lunch. It's not that you expect them to get lunch unless you say, why don't I get it this time? And then that's different, right? So you're treating them to lunch and it's unconditional. They don't have to buy you lunch. They don't have to do anything because you wanted to do that kindness. And when you put a condition on it, then it is, then it's not authentic. And you're back to um, objectifying 
whoever you're using them. So let me, uh, I want to treat you to lunch, but you really want them to invite you to fill in the blanks. And so you turn them to an object of needing to get something. So you reduce your relationships to using people and it's actually a manipulation. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? So subtle. And of course you're not doing it consciously and you're not thinking that it's a manipulation, but it is a manipulation. Even when you're going on dates and you're, and you are pleasing. There's there's this one uh, instance where um, a woman went on a date with a man, and she they got seated, and he had requested this beautiful table, and they and they got uh, seated in a great spot, beautiful table, and and but she was cold, and so she was so cold that all night she was distracted because she was freezing, she was shivering, and she didn't tell her date that she was cold. So at the end of the night. When they went to leave, she noticed that he was a little distant, and then he didn't call her back. And and then she asked him, um, she thought that they had a good connection, why he didn't call her back. And she, he told her, it's because you were really distant. You weren't really there. I didn't really connect with you. And it's because she was cold, and she didn't want to ask to move to another table or get his jacket because she was had slipped into, I just, I don't want to, you know, upset the apple cart. I don't want to complain. I just want to go with the flow. But she put her own health, you know, uh, aside. And what had happened is it backfired. So you see how that can backfire on a date. So it's so important to be authentic and people pleasing is a, is a buzzkill because authenticity creates relationship, whereas uh, manipulation using people, even if it's unconscious, it's still, it is what it is. And it's it's something deeper going on. So we have to really start to assess that. Where are you, where are you getting your real approval? Where are you creating your values from? Your value system is created by, in your childhood. And it's time to give your value system an overhaul. And so um, some of the other ones I'll rattle through really quick. Then I'm going to take some questions. You pretend to agree with everyone. It's like you're kind of going along. Um, maybe you listen to other people's opinions. Um, even when you dis disagree, it's a good social skill. But pretending to agree, um, wanting to be liked, can goes against your values. So if you're in a situation where it's appropriate to not voice an opinion, then you can listen to others' opinions. That's fine. You're not agreeing. You're just you're just being a good listener. If it was appropriate for you to have some feedback, then you would voice your your opinion, right? Um, another one is you're feeling responsible for how others um, feel. Other people's feelings, needs, and wants are just that, other people. I want to give you all permission right now to stop owning other people's needs, feelings, and wants because they're, you're not putting yourself first. You're putting them before you. And it's that whole analogy, put the oxygen mask on yourself before the plane goes down and then help the person next to you. How can you help the other person if you've passed out? So make sure you stop taking responsibility for other people. And apologizing often, you ever said, oh, I'm sorry. But you're like, why did I just say that? Why did I just say I'm sorry? It's like, I've done that before. I don't know if you've done that. Like, sorry, thank you. And you're like, wait, why did I say sorry and thank you? <laughs> And I think it's just from a habit, but I've heard myself say that, and I'm like, oh, what, is, what does that have to do with anything? And um, that comes from excessive blaming yourself. Frequent apologies can be a sign of also a bigger problem. Uh, you don't have to be sorry for being you. <laughs> Another one, we, you can't say no. We already discussed that. And um, you might feel that maybe someone's uh, disappointed in you or angry with you. We've kind of touched on that and it's going to compromise your values so don't do it and you go at go to lengths to avoid conflict and this is a really big one you you go to lengths to avoid conflict and and so because you don't want to rock the boat and that one we have to be careful especially when when we're in relationships you don't want to have an argument with your husband. You don't want to have a disagreement with your boyfriend. Things are on track and you don't want to rock the boat. But it's those times that create the the depth in your relationship. And you have to have enough courage to be honest in your relationships with other people. Because what I say to Michael and what I talk to my clients and what I teach in my inner circle is, if you're spending time with this person, I would say that they're your best friend. My husband's my best friend. How could I not tell my husband the truth? 
that means I'm lying to him. That means I'm just going along. That means I'm afraid to, to speak my truth, right? So, and I wouldn't be um, in integrity in my relationship. So I really would, I really err on the side of caution and speak my truth, but I do it with a feather and I do it in the right time, place, and the right tone. And that takes some practice. Okay, so that's that's my conversation around people pleasing. I just thought this topic would really support all of you. And um, yeah, health nut. I, I, I can I can relate to that. Um, when someone actually continually mistreats you, it's hard to be good. I had to cut someone off because of the vicious cycle, even my own sister because she's toxic. I literally lose my breath in a bad way with her. So yes, we have to move the toxic pe people to the next outside of your inner circle because you are greatly influenced by the people that you spend the majority of your time with. And I know you've heard that before. And that's what I was talking about calibrating. If you are ready to calibrate to a your next level, to where I am in terms of how I conduct myself in my relationships, how I conduct myself in my business, how I've created the, the business, the abundance, the husband, everything, then you want to look at joining my inner circle where I can be in touch with you. We can be in a, in a relationship where I can greatly influence you because those people that you have in your life, or if you're not clear, if they're toxic, do bring you down to that level where you get enrolled into their drama. And you don't even mean to because you become defensive, defending yourself, right? Defend, defenses. You're putting up fences to protect yourself in a defensive way. And that's not that's not constructive either. So check out the link after the broadcast. My assistant will put it in there. You can join the inner circle and start getting coaching. In fact, after the live broadcast, I do a private broadcast to my inner circle with my clients. And so I will be expanding this discussion. But intimately, um, talking to them about what's coming up for them and giving them some spot coaching. You're a recovering people pleaser and a therapist. Yes. 80% I find really struggle with terminating with terminating clients with it that I cannot be a fit. Don't like working with the client. And I'm reading, I'm reading this, um, her question. And I don't know if you want to read along. I sometimes feel frozen and difficult in the difficult conversations. Any suggestions? I find that every time I do determine, terminate, I do feel good about that. And so, oops, let me just put that back over here. Oop, no, nope, trying to get your question to show up again. There we go. Um, so I love this question. Thank you for posting it. This is great. Um, I'm just going to read it for a moment and, and uh, let it sink in. So I'm not sure what you're suggesting you'd like. You, when you do terminate people, you feel good about it. Um, I find even though I have progressed about 80%, I find really struggle with terminating with clients, whether that I'm, okay, so I see what you're saying. Yes, it's hard to release a client when you feel that they're best served elsewhere. I, I completely understand. And so what I do, and this is such a great question. What I do is I I look at myself first and I, and I see if there's some mirror that's being held up to me and why I want to terminate the client. Now, maybe it's very cut straight, cut and dry for you. But a lot of times I find that there's a mirror there where it's mirroring something that I've done in my past or a behavior that still exists in me. Because I, I feel like if you spot it, you got it. So sometimes I'll spot behavior that I actually have had and I recognize that it creates a lot of like discomfort in me. Like, oh, I don't like that. I want that behavior away from me. But then it's then I do a little work and and I uh, ask myself, what is this? What is this situation trying to reveal to me? about me what is this situation trying to reveal to me about me and then i then i go beyond that person i do my own inner work around it and then i come back and see if i still wanted to let that person go so i at the time i found that i have been um, it's been mirroring something that i had to do another layer 
on. Maybe it's um, you're butting heads with somebody that you don't need to butt heads with. You don't need to approach the situation that way. It could be approached in a different way, more compassion, more understanding, more empathy, more love. So I hope that helps you. Hi, Harumi. I'm going to be going live um, next. Hi, Gina. Hi, Jane. So that's all the time we have for all of you ladies uh, and gents. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to receive notifications that I'm going live on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, Engaged at Any Age. And if you want to be notified on Facebook, go ahead and follow my Facebook page. And I will see you next Thursday in my next broadcast. Sending you lots of love. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Jane. Bye, Tracy. Bye, Connie. Bye, Gina.